Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and uh, today we're going to clean up a Super Nintendo Junior, or a Super Nintendo 2 as it's sometimes called. Uh, this was released, I believe, in 1997. It was actually released after the N64. Kind of intended to be like a budget console if you still had, you were still playing the Super Nintendo or you wanted to get its games. It was like, I think, $100 at launch. Not a whole lot of people bought this. It was really only in production for about a year. Uh, I have one. This one is not mine. Uh, this one is actually belongs to a friend of mine. And he was like, yeah, you know, it, I've got this old Nintendo and it doesn't work. And uh, I was wondering if you could fix it or whatever it is you do. And I was like, yeah, I could take a look at that. Gave him the friend discount. And uh, yeah, so now we're going to go ahead and open this up and really clean it up. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's got you know a lot of dust and dirt on it, but nothing horrible. It's got some scuffs on it that hopefully we can get out. Uh, he said it didn't work, so I'm assuming it's just dirty. The Super Nintendo Junior, I mean... If you're in the market for a Super Nintendo, I would say pass on this one, unless you're a collector, because this one does not support S-Video, doesn't support SCART. The best video quality you can get out of it is composite, and it looks horrendous. Uh, even the composite, by comparison of the composite signal of the regular Super Nintendo, is not even that good, you know? So it's really, it was very much a budget console, so yeah, I would pass if I were you, unless you're a collector like me. That's the only reason I have one. Um, yeah, so whatever. We're going to go ahead, and uh, there is one advantage to it, though, it, which is it doesn't really turn yellow because they didn't put bromine in it, so that's a plus. But yeah, anyway, so in order to open it up, there's uh, four screw points on the bottom, okay? Right there and right there. Uh, it does not use a standard screwdriver like most Nintendo consoles. It uses a game bit. Uh, this is a special bit head that uh, Nintendo designed specifically to keep people out of their consoles. Uh, you can buy the screwdriver and the bit head on eBay for like four bucks, which I highly recommend doing, um, if you're going to do this, of course. Uh, and a bunch of people have told me in the comments over the years that you can actually use a, a BIC, specifically BIC pen, to open these up if you just kind of fit it in there. I haven't tried that, but, uh, you know, there you go. If you're out there, you're trying to do this and you want to save $4, that might be an option. Okay, I've got the screws out. And uh, at that point, you can just take the lid off. It just lifts up straight like this. And uh, let's see what we got under here. Not too bad. Uh, and there's the actual board on the console. It's got some dust. It's, it's not awful. There is a spider web happening there. I doubt you can see that, but uh, right in there. Maybe you can pick that up. I'm not sure. But anyway, let's focus on the lid here. Uh, we're going to take out all the little plastic pieces. Uh, that way we can clean every individual part. Uh, we can push this out just like that, and the button will pop right out. And that's the same with this button as well. You push down on these little purple tabs there and uh, pop that out. There you go. Uh, and there's screws here, as you can see. Now, those are just standard uh, Phillips screws. So we're just going to use a standard Phillips head screwdriver and uh, remove those. And if you'll bear with me one moment, I will take these out here. Uh, and then uh, what we'll do, if I can get this out at all, let's see here. Okay, there's one. Uh, then what we'll do is take all of these pieces that are coming off of the lid. And because there's no electronics, because they're obviously just plastic, uh, we'll, you know, wash them with uh, soap and water and get them nice and clean, get all the dust and everything out of them and uh, make it cosmetically look good looking. So it, it just this piece, as you can see, just kind of pops out and you'll be left with, uh, looks like three pieces. You'll have, this is the slot loading tray, obviously, and you're the little like, uh, the, the cartridge loading bay, if you will, of the spring doors. Now, this is optional. I will not be doing this, but if you want to, if you want to make this system play Super Famicom games, you see these plastic tabs back there? If you were to cut those out, Super Famicom cartridges would fit and they would play, just so you know, but I will not be doing that. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm going to take these plastic pieces and uh, like I said, I'm just going to take them, you know, go, go at them with some soap and some water and a brush and just kind of, you know, get all the dirt and grime out of them. Okay, I've washed all these parts and uh, especially on the, the board, on the main front piece here, you can really tell that, you know, a lot of that dirt and stuff is out of there, so that's good. So what we're going to do is just put all these pieces off to the side and let them dry, because obviously you don't want to put the console back together with uh, moisture in there. So put that to the side, and then we'll get down to the main board here. Uh, so what we're going to do is take out all the screws and get the motherboard out of there so we can wash the bottom piece. Now, uh, inside there's nothing but Phillips head screws. There's, uh, you can see there's, there's one there, there's one there, there, there. There's two on the cartridge slot here, 
and there's one silver one in the back right there. Uh, so what you got to do is you got to go ahead and remove those so that you can get the board out and uh, Just be aware that likely the silver ones are going to be a different size So make sure to put those off in a different area. So remember four gold three silver Okay, so I was right the silver ones are bigger. So just make note of that anyway So uh, the board we're just gonna go ahead and take that out now. It should just looks like it just pops right out. Yep uh, so we just put that off to the side and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this plastic and clean it up exactly the same way We did the other one again soap and water and just scrub and all the cracks and everything and Just get as much dust and grime out of it as you possibly can Okay, I've gone ahead and washed this whole thing up and it looks a lot better I mean, you know, there wasn't a whole lot on the bottom of this system or even the system in general But uh, you know the dust and stuff that I found I got out of there all the little webs and everything You know hairs etc all the just kind of crap that accumulates over time is all cleaned out of there now So I'm gonna go ahead and put that off to the side and let that dry So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the board and uh, we're gonna do what we can with this uh, Hopefully we can get it running um, So it's a cartridge system Usually that means that it's just dirty because there's not there's no moving parts You know, there's nothing really that can go wrong unless you try to break it So the big problem is of course that they just get dirty. So we're gonna go ahead and try to fix that um, So what we're gonna do is the most important thing you can do is clean inside the uh, The cartridge slot here, which we're gonna do in a bit But first what we're gonna do is just kind of look you look around and you see there's like just dust everywhere So we're gonna take compressed air and we're just gonna blow it around like that, and uh, you'll just see dust kind of fly out everywhere, which is what you want to do. You want to get as much dust away from the motherboard as possible. And uh, I would suggest spraying it, you know, around the buttons. That's a common place for dust to accumulate. The controller ports. Uh, the cartridge slot, but we'll just save that for a bit. And then back here by the, um, uh, by the electrical ports and the video port, right there. Yeah, and then you'll just get, basically just get loose dust out of there is what you want to do. Uh, so next up, what you're going to want to do is just take like a Q-tip, and I recommend just kind of, you know, going around the board like this and just kind of, you know, getting little bits of dust that might be stuck to it. You know, don't, don't be too intense about it. You obviously don't want to risk, you know, doing any kind of damage. But uh, you probably, you'll get some dust out by doing this, but frankly not a whole lot, especially in this, as you can see, it's a very small board, there's not much to get to, and this part is pretty well protected, but you know, you will get some. Uh, so what you really wanna do, this is the most important part, is you're gonna wanna clean inside the cartridge slot, like I said. So for this, I use a cartridge cleaning kit. Now this is something you can probably get on eBay, this is not particularly common anymore, uh, it's a very good way to clean those cartridge slots. Unfortunately, it's like I said, it's not common anymore. It used to be uh, So what I recommend doing now uh, for most people is you do what's called the credit card method You take a credit card you wrap it in felt cloth and uh, you do exactly what I'm about to do Which is you take this and you spray some Windex on it uh, in certain parts of the world Windex is known as window lean It's basically just a blue ammonia based glass cleaner and uh, you're gonna stick it in the cartridge slot, you know, like this. If I can get it in there, I think I'm using the wrong one, actually. I am. This is for a different console. My bad. We'll go ahead and use this one. Don't use one that won't fit, because that would be stupid. So anyway, just do exactly what I did again here. Put that back and forth like that. And then, yeah, there we go. It fits in. This one was specifically designed for the Super Nintendo. Uh, put that up and down a few times. And you'll just clean a lot of the dirt and gunk that's on the uh, contacts there. And uh, let's go ahead and see how much we get off of my finger here. Right, just going like that. Surprisingly, not much. That's a little weird, but uh, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing that. Uh, there's also extra ports on the side that that main contact won't reach. You might not be able to see them through there, but uh, there's, you can see there's little gold pieces and then there's like a break. Uh, that's a plastic break. So what you're gonna wanna do is take something smaller. In this case, I'm using this thing. This is specifically for that. You might have to get creative with like the end of a credit card or whatever, but again, do the same thing, spray it on there, clean inside. And uh, every few, you know, swipes, just kind of clean it off on your finger, respray, do it again, do it a little bit. And then after you're done with all of that, what you're gonna wanna do is take compressed air and spray it in there just to get out any excess moisture. Okay, I kept doing that for a bit and I, I did end up getting a lot more dirt out of there. So like I said, be persistent, make sure you get it out of there because the cleaner this thing is, the more likely it is that it's gonna work since that's usually the problem. 
But anyway, uh, there isn't a whole lot left to do on the board itself, but there is one other thing we can do. Um, you can try to clean back here. Uh, I would just take a dry Q-tip and just kind of, you know, just get see what kind of dust you can get out of there. But beyond that, there's really not much else to do back there. Uh, I didn't really get anything out of there, so I hope that's not the issue. But uh, yeah, so this is pretty much all we can do with the board. And while the console's still wet, we're going to try and remove scuff marks. Generally, I do this later, but I, I think it might actually be easier to do this when the console is still apart. In fact, I probably should have always been doing it that way. But uh, you see scuff marks, like, right... You can probably see it right there. There's, like, a little black mark and stuff. That is not dust. You know, that's just some scratch or something on the plastic. You know, plastic hit it and just changed its color a little bit, you know, scuffed it. Uh, so what we're going to do is get rid of that. Uh, for that, I use Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser. It's basically, like, eh, like a really like fine sandpaper. Now, it's best to use this when it's a little bit wet, which is another reason why I think doing it right now would make sense. So what you did basically do is you just kind of, you know, go over the scratch mark with, you know, the sandpaper stuff, and uh, bam, that's it. Comes right off. Looks great. So if you see any other scuff marks like that, I recommend going ahead and getting rid of those. But be careful, because this stuff is incredibly strong. If you're not careful with it, it can take logos off, like ink, you know. Fortunately, in this case, there isn't any. But, uh, you know, if it, the Super Nintendo logo was, like, painted on, it would come right off if you scratched over it. So be careful. Pick wisely when you're going to get those uh, marks out. Okay, so I've waited a few hours, and the plastic is completely dry now. Uh, of course, you do not, I think I've said this already, but uh, you do not want to put the thing back together until the plastic is totally, totally dry. You don't want any moisture in there. Be patient. Just let it air dry. That's the best way to do it. It's the most efficient way. If you really want to accelerate it, you can, you know, wipe it down with a paper towel or whatever, but really, just, just wait it out. It'll dry on its own. It'll be more effective. So anyway, all the pieces are totally set, so we're basically just going to put it back together at this point. Uh, we'll take our, our board, which is a very small little board, fits right in, and uh, we're going to put the silver screws into the two side ports here, and that one port in the back, and uh, we'll tighten those up. And then the other four remaining pieces, as you'll recall, go uh, two on the side here, just like this, pop it in, and then the other two, well that one popped out, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, the, the other two, of course, go over here. So go ahead and uh, put those all back into place. Okay, all the screws are back in and uh, the bottoms all together. So now we're going to take the lid here and put this back into place. Now, uh, in order to do that, you want to take these two flaps and you're going to have to line it up uh, and see which one matches. In that case, that one goes there. And this one, obviously, goes in the other place. And that can be a little tricky to try and fit into place but uh, you'll get it. They give you this, this little um, mount there for the spring. And if I can do it, there we go. All right, now we take this thing, and we, of course, there's only one way this thing can go in, so just go ahead and fit it appropriately. And uh, there you go. Then you take your three uh, screws, and you're gonna put those all into place, which uh, I'll do in a bit. But uh, for now, I wanna focus on the buttons, which is very simple. I'm just gonna hold this in place with my thumb so it doesn't fall out. The reset button, uh, you just kinda pop right back in, like, uh, I think it goes up the other way. And I believe it goes, yes, that way. There you go, like that. And then we take the, the uh, power switch and fit that in, which goes this direction. Huzzah. And there you go. Just pop it in, and it goes up and down nice and clicky. So, again, I'm going to take the uh, three screws and tighten those up. I'm sure you don't really need me to show you this, but obviously the next step is to just take this, make sure the power switch is down, and keep this power switch down, and then just fit it back together flip it over and put the four screws back in their place. So we've got the console all back together and I think it looks pretty good, cleaned up pretty well. All the dust and stuff is gone. Uh, so now the final step is just to um, make it look even better. And for that, what I'm gonna do is take some pledge and I'm just gonna spray some on a paper towel and then just uh, wipe down the console like this and uh, just get a nice layer of pledge all over it on the, you know, on the top and the sides and the bottom and just go all the way around, get on the buttons there and everything. And, uh, you know, it'll bring out a nice shinier coat to it. Now, of course, the Super Nintendo, at least, well, both cases, this one and the regular version, are, of course, um, 
uh, gray plastic. It's not dark and that means that it's not going to end up shining all that much. So it won't get a whole lot of benefit out of that, but it will, it will make it look a little bit better. And of course it'll become more dust resistant. So I highly recommend you go ahead and do that. I've let it sit and dry for about 10 minutes, which is really what you want to do after you put the pledge on. And I think it cleaned up very, very well. It's in pretty good shape now. Uh, so now of course, here's the moment of truth. Let's hook it up and see if it works. Got the console all hooked up here. Uh, as I think I mentioned before, you can use an original Super Nintendo power supply on this if you do if you buy one of these and it didn't come with one. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna test it out with The Legend of Zelda because why not? And uh, we'll just pop that in and let's hope for the best. Turn it on. It looks like it's working. The uh, problem with this console, of course, is that it has no LED on it. So yeah, you have no idea until it shows up on the screen if it's actually working or not. And of course it only runs through composites, so it looks like crap compared at least to uh, the SCART RGB option. But uh, you know, hey, it is what it is. Uh, so you know, I, I would highly recommend, um, if you're going to get a Super Nintendo, not to get this version. Unless, of course, you know, you just like the look of it or you don't care about the video quality or whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Apparently it all works, and uh, if you have one of these, I hope you learned how to clean it up. So, thanks again for watching, guys, and see you later.